so you're looking to buy a Windows laptop. You want the best performance that you can get while also having terrific battery life. So which laptop should you buy? This has never been an easy question to answer, but it's even more difficult to answer right now because we have two companies with two very different processors and both company claiming that their processor offers the most performance with the best battery life. So which company should you trust? And most importantly, which processor should you buy? So the two processors that we're talking about today are the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite and the Intel Core Ultra 7 Second Series, which is sometimes called Lunar Lake. There are some things you need to know about these processors, so let's start with the Qualcomm. So the Snapdragon X Elite is based on the ARM architecture and comes with a specialized version of Windows called Windows on ARM. This can present some compatibility issues with the normal Windows that you probably use every day, but we'll get to that in a bit. The important thing to know here is that Microsoft and Qualcomm are working together to really push the Snapdragon X Elite as being the way to experience the best version of Windows. This is the first time these companies have worked this hard to make this happen. Also, Qualcomm claims that the Snapdragon X Elite offers the most performance you can get on a Windows machine while offering the best battery life. Meanwhile, we have the Core Ultra 7 Second Series from Intel, once again, sometimes called Lunar Lake. This is the normal processor based on x86 architecture, the one that you probably have in your Windows laptop right now. It is a complete redesign from Intel processors we've seen in the past, which allows it to be very performant while all also sipping on battery life. So in other words, Intel is making the exact same claim here, that this is the best way to experience Windows with the best battery life. I've already made a video going over what it was like spending a week with a Snapdragon X Elite chip. I used that in a Dell XPS 13 laptop. You can check that video out right here if you want to catch up on that. So what I've done now is, is I've gotten a hold of the exact same laptop, a Dell XPS 13 model, but with a Lunar Lake chip instead. This is giving me a great way to compare the two processors because everything else is basically the same across these two laptops. Granted, I'm not telling you that you need to buy one of these two laptops, but I'm just gonna tell you my experience with these chips so that you can decide which chip you should buy in the laptop that you are looking at right now. Now, I said that these chips are very different, but they are kind of the same in a few key areas. Let's start with battery life. With battery life, you're going to see very similar results across both chips. Yes, you might be able to eke out a few extra minutes doing certain tasks with one chip than you would from the other, but in general, for your day-to-day -day normal laptop usage, you're probably going to see about the same battery life from both of these. And to be clear, the battery life is exceptional. We're talking eight hours of work without needing to charge. For the Snapdragon X Elite and for the Lunar Lake model, I was able to go a full eight hour workday without charging the laptop, using it in its regular balanced performance mode with the screen on the entire time. This is something that you just wouldn't be able to see from any other Windows laptop with a processor that's not the X Elite or Lunar Lake. Performance is also mostly the same. You will see some differences between single core and multi-core tasks. For example, your multi-core tasks on the Snapdragon X Elite are going to be a little bit better than the multi-core tasks on Lunar Lake. But on the flip side, your single core tasks with Lunar Lake are going to be better than what you see on the Snapdragon X Elite. But for most people, this doesn't matter. For most people who are just browsing the web, watching some Netflix and doing whatever you normally do with your laptop, you're not gonna see much of a difference between these two. It's only the people who are doing really heavy tasks like video editing and processing 3D models and things like that, that's when you're gonna start to see the difference and you might wanna go with the Snapdragon X Elite over that because it is so much better at those multi-core performances. Even fan noise and power consumption are basically the same across these two platforms. If you're firing up both of these laptops and really pushing the limit, you might hear some fan noise here and there. But once again, for your basic daily task, you're not gonna hear the fans at all. They're basically going to be silent machines. If you want the nitty gritty details of how these two chips compare against one another in benchmarks and other tests, I highly recommend a Max Tech video that goes over how these chips perform in the same laptops I'm talking about right now. I'll put a link to that in the description. But 
Don't jump away just yet, because I wanna talk about the big differences I saw between these two chips. The core difference between these two processors I've already touched on, which is that the Snapdragon model uses Windows on ARM and the Intel model uses normal Windows. This can create very different experiences for the end user. And unfortunately, all the problems that I discussed in my Snapdragon X Elite video from a few months ago are still present today. This makes it so that the Intel Lunar Lake has a distinct set of advantages over the Snapdragon X Elite. First, nearly every Windows program you've ever used will work on the Intel model, but might not work on the Snapdragon model. Unfortunately, all the programs I tried to use on the Snapdragon X Elite months ago for the video I pointed out earlier still don't work today, including Google Drive for desktop and lots of creativity apps like Adobe Audition and Adobe After Effects. Number two, the vast majority of PC games will work on the Intel model, but will not work on the Qualcomm model. This includes very popular games such as League of Legends, Fortnite, and Horizon Forbidden West. If you try to launch these three games on the Snapdragon model, they just literally will not launch whereas they will launch on the Intel model. And number three, this is a big one for some people, if you want to install Linux on your laptop, you can do that on the Intel model. You cannot do that on the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite model. This is something that we might get into 2025, but it's going to be months or even years before anyone will be able to reliably install a Linux distro on a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite chipset. So if you're a Linux fanboy, stay away from this one. So after Hearing all that, you're probably thinking, well, Lunar Lake is clearly the way to go. However, there are three disadvantages to using Lunar Lake when compared to the Snapdragon model, so let's talk about those real quick. First, even though Lunar Lake supports more PC games than the Snapdragon X Elite, there is no way to attach a discrete GPU to a Lunar Lake chip. That means that you're not going to be able to get a laptop with an NVIDIA GPU inside and play a lot of high-end games. So, if you're a big gamer looking to buy a great gaming laptop, stay away from Lunar Lake. Two, Lunar Lake is very expensive for Intel to make because Intel needs to outsource a lot of the materials used to create it. Therefore, you're not gonna find a laptop with Lunar Lake for under $1,000. In fact, you're probably gonna spend closer to $1,500 on a good one. This is something you don't have to worry about if you go Qualcomm, because Qualcomm also offers the Snapdragon X Plus chipset. This offers similar performance and similar battery life, but costs a lot less. Intel has already said that Lunar Lake is essentially a one-off production. Whatever comes next after Lunar Lake for laptops is not going to be like this. And we're probably gonna go back to having pretty weak battery life. And the reason for this is because what I just talked about, which is that Lunar Lake chipset is way too expensive for Intel to make long-term. So in other words, Lunar Lake is kind of a flash in the pan kind of thing. Whereas once again, Qualcomm and Microsoft are working to make the Snapdragon X platform the de facto Windows laptop platform. So we're gonna see way more options for Qualcomm and way fewer options for Lunar Lake which is another thing that might dissuade you from getting a Lunar Lake laptop. So I promised I would give you a definitive answer here. Which processor should you go with? Well, let me talk about first, which people should not buy either processor. Creative professionals should avoid both of these processors. If you're somebody who works in graphic design or audio production or anything like that, you probably don't want either of these. The reason is, is because a lot of the programs that you rely on may not work on the Snapdragon model. And with the Lunar Lake laptops, you're only limited to 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of RAM because the RAM is actually built into the processor itself. If you need more RAM than that, you can't get it. Also, as mentioned before, you can't get a Lunar Lake model with a discrete GPU. So that takes that out of the equation as well. Gamers should also stay away from both of these. I've already talked about how you can't play a lot of games on the Snapdragon X model. And even with Lunar Lake, some of those games aren't gonna play that well because once again, you don't have a discrete GPU ability. So even Horizon Forbidden West, which is one of my favorite games, is basically unplayable due to this glitch you're seeing right here. 
This makes it so you can't go to save points and you can't craft items. So you're basically not able to play the game. Obviously, I didn't play every game out there, so I don't know how many other bugs and errors there are, but if you can't play this one, chances are high, there are a lot of other games you can't play either. Finally, students should probably avoid both of these chips as well because they're so expensive. If you're on a student budget, you should probably just stick with a Chromebook. Unless you have a very generous relative or some other bit of luck like that, you don't want either of these chips. Okay, so you're not a creative professional, you're not a heavy gamer, and you're not a student. Which chip should you buy within your next laptop? The definitive answer here is Lunar Lake. The reason I say that is only because the Snapdragon X Elite and the Snapdragon X Plus don't offer all the apps that you need to get your job done. That only works on Intel Lunar Lake when you examine both of these chips. So for this round, Intel wins. Intel is winning this battle, but the war rages on and I think Qualcomm is going to win the war. I think that the Snapdragon X platform is what's going to be the next big thing in Windows laptops. And Intel is decidedly not going to survive that. Let me put it this way. When Apple is looking at the competition in the Windows space over the next few years, it's not worried about Intel, it's worried about Qualcomm. Because Qualcomm is offering a product that actually competes with the MacBook when it comes to performance and battery life. Whereas Intel is just kind of playing around in that space with the Lunar Lake chip that we already know isn't going to get a direct sequel. So in the long term, Qualcomm is gonna win this. This year, yes, my suggestion is to buy a Lunar Lake chipset, but next year, it might be very different. Anyway, I wanna know what you think. Are you gonna buy a Lunar Lake processor or are you gonna buy a Snapdragon processor? And which one do you think is gonna win the war in the end? Jump down in the comments and let me know. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.